Hello for my last ever, ever, ever JW discussion and beliefs from this house because I'm moving on Friday. So, um, yeah, I don't know when I'll get time to do this again, but here we go. Basically, this is a sort of response to the, um, obviously, Jehovah's Witnesses who've been commenting on uh, a video I put up about where the Jehovah's Witnesses gone uh, in relation to COVID completely halting the preaching work to get, you know, people saying, oh yeah, they are still, but they're writing letters. Well, I've not had a letter, uh, uh, you know, a couple of people says I've had a letter, but... Hey ho, you know, <laughs> I'd love to get a letter, I'd love to get a letter, but um, certain Jehovah's Witnesses believe this is it, this is the end, the, the, the preaching work as, as we know it has finished, They're, they've accomplished their task and that uh, Armageddon is uh, imminent and when you get the sort of, when you listen to what's coming out from the governing body, you can understand why, very similar to 75, when you hear about what's been heard, what's been spoken, especially you know from JW broadcasts or from platforms in relation to governing body members, you think, yeah, that this this makes sense, you know. When you get told that you know we knew this was going to happen, that we're in the what the final minute, the final hour, the final day, the final week, the final month, the final year. When you get things like that, and then all of a sudden the witnesses can't go out preaching anymore, you can maybe think that maybe they do think, genuinely think, you know, if I was still a Jehovah's Witness today, I'd probably think, you know, maybe this is it. Maybe we're done. Maybe we're done and dusted. The preaching work's finished. Okay, that makes sense. But, I've been here before. I was here before. Prior to 75, 75. And then towards the 80s, you know, I, I thought the preaching work was at, a, at an end. Now, the thing about it is, I've got here the, um, the Jehovah's Witness uh, reports. I don't think 220. <laughs> oh, can't wait for those figures to get printed. This is the 2019. 2019 uh, figures. And it's just when you think about this, when you think about it, we'll, we'll just come back to that in a minute. But when you think about this, um, when Jesus came to the earth and gave this all important command, this good news of the kingdom must be preached uh, to the entire inhabited earth to witness to all the nations. The people who heard that message at that time only knew at that probably at that time of of the nations in the Middle East, and that's where they concentrated on. As we know, we would see you know. Let's go to you know the. The, the let's go to Rome, let's go to places like that, congregations around that side, you know, the east side of the Mediterranean. That's all they that's that's how small their world was, the east part of the Mediterranean. That's all they thought there was. But Jesus Christ, if we're to believe the Bible's account, that he was the Son of God who'd been in heaven for millions of years. When he gave those words, he more than any other human then living and living up to that point, knew how expansive the actual population of the world was. He knew it. So when he said the entire inhabited earth to witness to all the nations, he was clearly referring to nations which these people at that time didn't even know existed. Nations like China. China, for instance, he knew that China existed, and he would have known that China had existed for, you know, a couple of thousand of years. In fact, this is the thing, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, all you get taught is the history in the Middle, in the Middle East. You get told the history of all the nations that affected the Bible times and the Bible stories. So you get the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the, the, the Ammonites and Moabites, uh, Medes and Persians, the Greeks and the Romans and all the other ones I, I failed to mention. That's all you get. When you're at school, you get the Romans 1066, the Industrial Revolution, uh, the Agricultural Revolution, and, and what may be what led to World War I. I don't really know. So basically, it's, it's quite narrow. You don't get to understand anything about uh, China, for instance. I know, and I, I, I say China because it, it, it's going to come back to haunt this one. So China, for instance, the, the, the first dynasty is comparable to, if we be 
believe Bible chronology is in the Tower of Babel going up. The first dynasty was 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 already on the go in China. Um, five hundred years uh, that this the second dynasty was five hundred years before um, the Israelites fled out of Egypt, and the, and this will and, and that dynasty lasted for a, a hell of a long time. It was like sixteen hundred years until they started breaking down and warring again, and then it took the first emperor of China to uh, reunify. China again by basically <laughs> destroying everybody else. Now the first emperor of China, as we know, when he died, he had this, you know, in the for Forbidden City, this elaborate tomb which still hasn't been excavated. But they, we have seen parts of this, which is a terracotta warriors. Now I've seen some of the terracotta warriors in Liverpool. We went out for a drink. Now that's a different story. And I've seen these, and I saw about five of them. What I didn't realise is their date. The date of the Terracotta Warriors is around about 200 years before Jesus Christ. You know, around about the, the, uh, you know, the, the Roman Empire was on the go there. 200 years before Jesus Christ. And yet these two civilizations, the, you know, the, the Chinese one and the Roman one, probably didn't even know each other existed. I would have loved to have seen the Chinese on the field of battle versus the Romans. That would have been, you know, that's probably the, the great what ifs, but it never happened because of the, obviously the Chinese stayed east and the Romans were, were sort of heading more, more west, as west as you could go, as west as Scotland. They didn't really go east at all for some reason. And of course, in between, in between the, that, you know, Turkey and going on, you know, there were other countries as well. India, for instance, there, there, there's, there's another one. Now, if we think about that, that when Jesus was on the earth, he was aware that, and we're, and we're just about talking about China here, you know, what about all the other um, civilizations and nations which were expanding, or which had kings and queens and emperors, whatever, and Japan and, and India, uh, you know, places like that. But we're just concentrating China. So Jesus knew when he gave that command that this good news of the kingdom must be preaching to the entire inhabited earth to witness to all the nations, he must have been thinking about China. Nobody else, when he, when he heard just his message, thought about China. In fact, nobody thought about China for, God, what, another, you know, 1,500 years maybe until, you know, boats started going over that way. <laughs> maybe longer. You know, this is, you know, it's just incredible to think that it was just, China was carrying on to, and people over in the West were completely oblivious of what was going on there, yet they've been going on for thousands of years. Now, let's become updated. Let's get updated. When this used to come out, here, this report, I remember we used to laugh about... They, they used to be in, uh, some of the figures were absolutely awful. Now, here's us thinking that Armageddon was imminent when we read these figures. But things haven't changed, I've noticed. We used to laugh about, I think there was like a one point, one publisher in Bangladesh. And you used to see his, his publisher ratio to the rest of the nation. And we used to, we used to laugh, oh, he, 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 oh he's, got, he's got a long way to go. Well, things aren't really cracked on since then. Apparently in Bangladesh, there's 324 uh, publishers. The ratio to publisher is half a million. <laughs> so every publisher there has to speak to half a million people. Half a million people um, to go so there's a witness to um, all the nation. And, and Pakistan is at much better, uh, 210,000 uh, people that each publisher must preach to, must preach to. And uh, there's, you know, they're the top two, there's other ones, where, you know, you can go, it's like 60,000, 45,000. And if you think about your average publisher, who you'd speak to in maybe their lifetime, it doesn't even come close to that. It's like, in the hundreds? in their lifetimes of witness and yet these people currently at the moment of like you know half a million people each to speak to it's impossible it's completely utterly impossible now what's interesting is right at the end of course is this figure here that there that figure there is interesting and that figure there is a one of the 33 other lands where the preaching work is underground or it's Banned. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses declined to print <laughs> who those nations are, 
who those nations are. Bro, it's quite important. Uh, there's been a decrease in those nations. Apparently there's 210,000 in the 33 other lands. But let's hear it for the other lands. Here are some of those other lands and their current, well, not even their, 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 their population, going back about a couple of years. Okay, Afghanistan spanned 37 million. Algeria, 42 million. Uh, Egypt 100 million, Iran 81 million, Iraq 38 million, Jordan 10 million, Morocco 37 million, North Korea 25 million, Russia 150 million, Saudi Arabia 33 million, Somalia 15 million, Syria 17 million, uh, Tunisia 11 million, uh, Uzbekistan 32 million, Vietnam 100 million, Yemen 28 million, and at the top of the tree is China. China has at the moment uh, one and a half billion people in the world. Apparently China makes up 20% of the Earth's living population at the moment. When you factor in all the rest of these nations here, you run about really maybe 30%, probably more, maybe 40% of the world's population at the moment are, are in countries where Jehovah's Witnesses are unknown. They've probably never seen the Bible. They've probably never seen the Kingdom Hall. They've never seen the Awaken the Watchtower, the Lucky Sots. They've probably never seen these bunch of guys standing in a corner with these carts and these boards, not speaking to anybody. They've never seen a carter. That is a literally 30 to maybe 40% of the Earth's population have no idea of imminent destruction, uh, global genocide by the God of the Bible, who the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in. China, you've got no chance. You've got no chance. And China at the moment has got something like, I don't know, 20% of the world's population lives in China. Right? So, hold on a second. Hold, hold on a second. If the good news of the kingdom is to be preached in the entire inhabited earth to a witness to all the nations, what about these nations here? What about these nations here? How can Jehovah's Witnesses say at the moment, that's it, we're done, we're quite happy, when you've got at least 20% of the world's population in one country, you know, don't even know what a tract is. Never heard of Armageddon. You know, probably, often I haven't even got the internet, or it's a really slimmed down version of the internet. What about these people? How do you witness to them? Instead, you're doing the same street again and again and again and again. What about these guys here? What about the, the, the you know the, the the witnesses in 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 Pakistan and Bangladesh where it's like half a million or two hundred and ten thousand people that they're having to individually try and work through in their few hundreds? What about them? What about all these other countries right? Iran and Iraq and North Korea? What about those people? What about the thirty to forty percent of the Earth's population? wouldn't know Jehovah's Witness if they bumped, if they actually went fly into a cart by mistake and said, oh my God, who are you? What about them? Yet Jehovah's Witnesses and the governing body are giving out these, you know, giving out these sort of, uh, the feelers, but that's it. It's done. It's done and dusted. Sorry, you haven't fulfilled the command of Jesus Christ. I don't understand this one. Sorry, I don't. But you see, this is the kick on this one. Because when you say to a Jehovah's Witness, well, hold on a second, what about countries uh, like this where the preaching works banned? What, 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 what's going if Armageddon comes tomorrow? What about all, what about all the, 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 the wee Chinese fellas in China? 20% of this population, one and a half billion. What about these guys? What, what will God do to them? Now, what you will get in response, and I've said it before myself, and I've heard it coming back this way. What he will do is, he, God will look into their hearts individually, not as a nation, but individually, and see if they would have accepted the truth if they had walked past Carter's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, and eventually had the courage to just say, I've got five minutes to kill, my wife's in Tesco's or at the, uh, the wet market, what are you guys up to here? And what's this all about? And, and, uh, and actually had the witness. So what we're trying to say is that somehow God is going to look into every individual person's heart, that we're just concentrating China, 20% of the US population, is going to concentrate on what he'll look at one and a half billion people's hearts, 
prior to Armageddon, maybe as is happening, before the angels have reached China, and he's going to decide on a person-by-person uh, -person basis whether if that person had been given the chance of, of a witness would have accepted a Bible study and got baptised and become a publisher and to become a member of the congregation. That's apparently what he's going to do. And Jehovah's Witnesses say, well, that's good. That's good. Because that means it, make me, it makes me feel all right now. It makes me feel good that we haven't gone to China, you know, or North Korea or Iran and Iraq or Saudi Arabia. And that it's all right that I'm just concentrating on, on my little portion here because Jehovah will look after those looking the, into their hearts. So you would then think to yourself then, okay, let's just think about this. Logically, how does, how does looking into somebody's heart really, really work? You know, because I kid you not, if he looked into my heart 30 years ago, he would have seen I was all full, all full of the truth and whatever. And probably every ex-Jehovah's Witness was the same. Probably every ex-Jehovah's Witness who maybe came into the truth, not brought up with it and was conditioned into it, who came into the truth, at some point has given up um, college, further education, qualifications, uh, working on their natural born talents in whatever it is, um, Maybe marriage, maybe children, uh, they've lost relationships with the, they've sacrificed relationships with the family who haven't become witnesses or, or, or witness fat or witness members who've got disfellowshipped. There, there, there's a whole load of things that when you become a Jehovah's Witness, because it does affect your heart, that you go into it wholeheartedly and you do all these things. Yeah, I'll give up this, I'll give up that, I'll give up all the other because you firmly believe it's the truth. And yet, as the years and the decades may, may go, something has happened to every ex-Jehovah's Witness that we've fallen away. Once we were, it was completely in our hearts and eventually we've fallen away, fallen away from what they call the truth. So what does God do? Because he could say, yes, this person's heart if they've got the truth, would have accepted the truth and the worth saving. But would they have continued in the truth? Ten years later, does he, does he sort of, in the, in the one and a half billion cases of China alone, does he look at every individual person and say, right heart condition, now I'm going to now imagine their life as a witness. Good, very good, yeah, it's good, oh, oh shit, oh, 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 oh no, no. 20 years on, he, he falls, he, he realises he's gay. 20 years on, he starts to have doubts. He reads something on the internet. 20 years on, he becomes ill. 20 years on, he, he has an affair. His wife has an affair. Who knows? He, over, you know, all of a sudden, he just loses his love for the truth. And does he do this in every case? Does he imagine their life course? No, 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 no. Because I know loads of people who are Jehovah's Witnesses, who either my, me being a witness, they left and I was, I was blindsided by some people who left Jehovah's Witnesses. I just thought, what? They really no, wouldn't have seen it coming. Just completely full on. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone like that. The hearts turned like that. You know, it's just bizarre. So does God do that? In one and a half billion cases, does he imagine their heart and then, and then imagine this make-believe life as a Jehovah's Witness to see if they would stay the course? Because funny enough, when you look at the Bible, you have people in the Bible that Jehovah initially blessed and rewarded them, but eventually their heart turned. He never had the foresight to look at King Saul, for instance, and King Solomon, for instance, and what was happened to Moses on the edge of the promised land, and Judas Iscariot, all really up for it, here we go, but something in their hearts changed, till eventually they fell out of favour with God and lost their lives, their kingships, even what David did as well. And then we look at, for, for some like, for instance, if, if, 
Somebody like the Apostle Paul, his heart was completely against the Christians. He persecuted the Christians to such an extent that Jesus had to appear to him and tell him to stop and to change his heart. <laughs> so in other words, you know, it took Jesus to appear for Saul's heart to change because he was in opposition to this new fangled religion. But we don't get that opportunity. Would, would God be as merciful with us? You know, you know, for people who are in opposition to Jehovah's Witnesses, well, if my son had, had actually appeared in front of them and blinded them, they would have changed their opinion. Now, if I'm going to do that to the, you know, to Saul who became Paul, maybe I should give everybody else that opportunity. That would just be fair, wouldn't it? Ah, you see where, we're, it, where this doesn't work. <laughs> The worst thing about this is, as I've given this example before, of you get, for instance, somebody who's not in opposition to Jehovah's Witnesses, it may be a Jehovah's Witness husband, takes them to the Kingdom Hall, drives them to the assembly, goes to the memorial once a year, completely disinterested, doesn't get baptised, but Armageddon, he's going to die. But the little Chinese fella, who's never, ever, ever you know, <laughs> heard of Jehovah's Witnesses, he's okay because <laughs> his heart would have accepted the truth. But nobody knows how long he would have stayed in it. Poor, faithful husband, fantastic father, supportive. He's going down. Chinese fella never had the truth. He's staying up. Oh, this is where when you put, get into the nuts and bolts of this whole reason to his heart's business, it doesn't make any sense. What I would prefer, what I would prefer, that the Jehovah's Witnesses just came out and said, sorry, everybody in China is going to die. Everybody in Iraq and Iran and North Korea is going to die. They're all going to die. And they're going to die because unfortunately, unfortunately, they were living in a country in opposition to his people. And, and because they were in a nation in opposition to his people, that's why they die. Because that would make sense. Because when we think of the Bible, when we think about the God of the Bible, we know that nations that were in opposition to God's people, he wiped them out. He wiped them out, you know, men, women, children, dogs, cats, you know, literally killed them all. If you were a nation in opposition to God's people, there was no mercy. There was no mercy. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't oh, what I look into these guys' hearts. If only they could come to a knowledge of the true God and worship the true temple or whatever it is, that they would become um, a, a supporter of the true God. No, God never did that. He literally wiped them out. Wiped them out, not, not, not a problem. And in fact, when we think about God, you know, he, he is a God that likes to keep the minority and destroy the majority. Even, in, even when we go back to the flood, for instance, you know, he, he looked on, you know, on the earth, regretted what he made, says, I'm going to wipe it all out, and oh, spots Moses. There's Moses, a righteous one. What if Moses had been a pimp? What about his three sons had been coat dealers? There would, there would be no, there wouldn't, we won't be here, according to the Bible. And because Jehovah had only gone down this road to say, well, I'm, I'm going to destroy everybody, everything on the earth, you know, uh, by a flood, because I'm saving Moses using a boat, what I may as well do is I may as well save all the, you know, a sort of small proportion of all the creatures on the earth as well. So there are probably hundreds and thousands of horses, cats, dogs, budgerigars, elephants, you name it, but only two got into the ark. Only two of most things got into the ark. So there was a case of, yet again, God destroying the majority and saving the minority. Again, when we go to the Israelites in the um, leaving uh, Egypt, the, in the wilderness, on the verge of the promised lands, the spies go out, 12 come out, 10 come with a bad, uh, bad, bad, bad report, big massive grapes, giants, Fear spread through the whole of the nation. There was about a thousand, there was about a million people there at that time, because it wasn't just the Israelites that came out, but also people were enslaved to the Egyptians, and also each Egyptians left with uh, with Moses. And when God saw this panic, 
instead of just understanding, I can, you know, I understand why you're scared, but we can do this together. You've got my support, you've got my back. Do not be afraid. I know there's giants, I'll sort them out. Not a problem. He instead lost the plot and just said to Moses, how about I destroy them all and make a nation from you? And as we know, Moses had to then talk God down, actually say, oh no, God, remember, you're a, you're a loving God, you're, you're a loving God. Oh, what would the nations think if you just destroyed everybody out in the wilderness? There's a, um, an imperfect man trying to persuade a God not to destroy nearly a million people. God was quite happy at that point to destroy the majority and save the minority. In fact, as the 40 years went on, he ensured that most of those people died an unnatural death. I have done a video about this, about the figures, if you want to look it under the video section, about a lot of people dying unnaturally in the wilderness. Uh, and so there it goes. That just shows that, God, that if the witnesses just came out and said, yeah, the preaching work's finished, uh, forget about that whole heart condition. If you're not a baptised Jehovah's Witness, you die. I probably it probably makes sense because you say, yeah, that's sort of that is sort of what God's all about. That's what He's like. If you are an Asian opposition, you you get clumped in with them, the whole nation perishes. So that's why if if you're a nation that's clearly in opposition to Jehovah's Witnesses, you're all going to die. You're all going to be lumped in with a bad nation because we've seen that God does in fact destroy the majority and saves the minority time and time and time again. But this comes back to this command of Jesus to preach, you know, to the entire inhabited earth, to witness to all the nations, and then talk about mixed, mis mixed messages because surely that hasn't been fulfilled. Surely when it comes to, as you say to, to God, as you say to Jehovah's Witnesses in reference to God, is, is, can God do anything? Yes, he can. Are all things possible with God? Yes, they are. Well, if all things are possible with God, how come people in China have never had a witness? How come, you know, little whoever it is hasn't had a witness? How, how come he hasn't been able to manoeuvre events there? Is Satan stronger than God? Oh, oh, no, he's not. Well, if that's the case, then how is it then that it's banned in 33 lands? How come 40% of this Earth's population presently, not even going back over the past 100 years who've lived and died or whatever, how come they've never had a witness if all things are possible with God? Again, this just shows time and time again that none of this makes any sense. The good news of the kingdom has not been preached in the entire habited Earth to witness to all the nations. At least 40% of them are going to die at Armageddon in ignorance of why they're being put to death. Because, because they happen to be born in the wrong country under a government that's banned the witness work. That's the reality. And I just wish Jehovah's Witnesses would just come out and be a little bit frank and a little bit honest and just say, yeah, unfortunately, they will die because they are not a baptised Jehovah's Witness. And we can just forget about this whole nonsense about it's their heart condition. Because as I've already demonstrated, this whole thing I've seen about the heart condition doesn't really work at all. Anyway, that is <laughs> my take on the preaching work being finished. Hey boys, you've got a hell of a lot of long way to go yet. So get cracking on, stop going on the same streets again again, stop writing to people and stop concentrating uh, in China and North Korea and um, Iran and Iraq. That's where the need is really great. Just all, all you witnesses just say, right, game's a bogey, we've, you know, we've, we've done what can be done here and pack in your jobs and off you go to Iran and Iraq and Saudi Arabia and North Korea and Russia and China because they really, really need you. If you really want to fulfill Jesus' command, you know, to preach to all the nations and the inhabited earth, book that, well, since COVID's finished, I want to see all the witnesses, <laughs> all the witnesses in all the, old, all the happy places in the West, all go to China. Goodbye, and I won't be able to see the uh, cartels anymore. Anyway, that's my take on it. See you another time in my new house. And those pictures may be on the new wall. I don't know, probably not. Anyway, bye-bye.